Well, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me and the Santa Rosa Symphony artistic partner, Ellen Tafeswilich. We are going to take this uh, a little bit of a dive in depth into all the amazing concerts that we have programmed from January through May of 2021. Uh, an incredible set of concerts that we are kind of continuing as our at-home series, beautifully filmed and presented to you to be enjoyed uh, in the comfort of your homes. So we're gonna dive into each one of these programs. I'll sort of give an overview of the thought process around its creation. And then Ellen will walk you through uh, her piece on each program. So we're gonna start off in January with a program that I put together as um, sort of, you know, past and present, um, but kind of looking back at the past. And so that's why, you know, you have a work um, by, by Bach, the, the famous Richard Carr, uh, but it's been arranged by Anton Weber of the Second Viennese School in the 20th century. Um, yeah, yeah. We have a wonderful work, you know, we have works by, by Mozart and then uh, a Mozart contemporary, uh, yeah. Mariana Martins. Uh, and so, you know, we're, look, we're looking at pieces that, um, you know, very much in some ways classical in style. And Ellen, you know, your work, this Concerto Grosso, I think it looks back at the, at the work of Handel, right? Oh, yes, definitely. And um, I, I was a violinist. And when I was, was young, I played the Handel D major sonata, which I love. I still love it. And um, I got a call one day from somebody from the Washington Friends of Handel. I mean, that sounds like a lobbyist group, but it was a wonderful support group for, for the music of Handel at the anniversary. And um, they asked me if I would write a piece with based on a theme of Handel. And of course, immediately this, this, this sonata that I had played years and years and years and years ago popped into my head. And I said, oh, can I call you back? And I said to myself, if I can go to the piano, of course I remember the, the violin part, but if I can go to the piano and remember the figured bass part, I, I said, I'm gonna say yes. And I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to say yes. So I went to the piano, and sure enough, after all those years, I still had the whole piece in my head somewhere. Uh, so I went back and I said, I'd love to do it. And um, my piece um, actually quotes Handel in the first and the last movement. And in fact, I, I, I give him the last word in the last movement. Mm -hmm. um, which is only fair. <laughs> um, but then the other movements sort of everything sort of takes off on some of the, the aspects of those themes. And um, that was a great pleasure for me to write it. And uh, uh, I, uh, I, I even have asked the um, musicians to play the actual quotes of Handel in more of the style of the time, you know, where they didn't, they did, they didn't have metal strings and they, it was just a different kind of sound quality. So to go between the sound quality of the, the uh, Baroque era to, to today's kind of sound quality was also a, a part of it in, in my mind. Um, I, I had a wonderful time writing this piece. And um, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm very glad you're gonna be doing it. <laughs> I think it's, you know, along those lines, it's, it's wonderful that you, it's, you actually included a harpsichord in this piece. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pieces written for it. <laughs> and, um, you know, the harpsichord is a wonderful instrument. Sometimes it has gotten overwhelmed because people do big, too big things with the orchestra. But uh, I've never, has there been a problem hearing the harpsichord in this piece because, you know, I, I'm writing for that particular instrument to play, not something that's going to be overshadowed by too much weight on the other part of the orchestra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and it, it should be mentioned, one of the reasons why this collaboration works so well is, is you're right, there are so many composers these days where everything is more, more, more as far as like size, and, yeah, and yeah. that's how they express themselves. And um, but of course, all the great composers in history were just as adept at writing for smaller ensembles as they were with larger ensembles. And, you know, while we can't showcase, for instance, your amazing symphonies that I adore, um, you know, we're able to show how much color you bring out in slightly smaller ensembles, since that's what we can have on stage. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm in love with the orchestra. I have been since I was a child. And I mean, I actually, I was a violinist in the American Symphony under Leopold Stokowski for seven years. <laughs> and uh, I just, I just can't get over the orchestra. And to me, it's a collection of creatures. Um, it's it's not like, you know, something that's that's played back at you in MIDI or something. It's it's individual characters and they have they have ways they move and they have um, things they feel and things they do better at than other people. And I mean, it's just like you, I'm acquainted with this large group of people and whenever I write uh, something. I already had always have the full score right in front of me because I want to feel them sitting there and writing for them. You know, so I, I love the orchestra and your programs are really very, very interesting. <clears throat> I, I was very impressed when I, when I saw these programs. It's uh, uh, very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we should probably move on. Otherwise, I'm going to be here all day, which I would love talking to you all day. But let's move on to the, the second program. <laughs> So in our, our second program, um, for, for me, this is a program, I was thinking about um, character pieces. You know, th there's such a beautiful story around a lot of these pieces, like Wagner's work, um, which was a birthday uh, gift for his wife, and Dvorak looking back on his heritage, putting together this little suite of Czech-inspired pieces. Mm, and yeah. I think of yours in many ways like a character piece, which might be odd for prologue variations. But when I was reading about what you did, that the variations are very much character variations in a sense, um, I thought it, it kind of beautifully yeah, yeah. came together in this program. But maybe you could tell us a little more about this beautiful work for strings. Well, I, uh, this was a commission from the Chattanooga Symphony and goes back quite a ways. Um, I wrote it in 80, 1983 and it was first performed in 84. Um, again, you know, string instruments are something very, very close to my heart. And I just like kind of letting them loose and um, they don't even have to tell me where they're going next, if you, if you understand what I'm saying, um, because even though I always have a plan for a work that I'm working on, if the music wants to do something else, I throw away the plan and I go with, I go with the music. And I wanted to go, sort of go through a number of uh, uh, personality, shall we say, aspects of, of the string instruments. And uh, that was a great pleasure for me in, in this particular piece. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely gives a workout to the string players. So really excited to be able to show them off. Really excited to show them off. <laughs> so in our, uh, our, our March program, this is really exciting because, you know, one of the things that, you know, th this season is we haven't really had a chance to, to pull in any of our, our uh, normal soloists uh, for this season. But I did, you know, as, as we head into March, I know that, you know, we will understand a little bit more uh, about what it means to bring someone in from out of town and how to safely uh, bring them on stage. Zul Bailey is is a great fr friend of mine. We've worked together on several occasions and yeah, I yeah. knew it would be perfect because uh, he actually just uh, gave the premiere of your new cello concerto, which we will be giving the West Coast premiere of on this concert. Yeah. So maybe yeah. you can tell us a little bit uh, around about the inspiration behind this and your work with Zul. Well, um, Zul just really knocked the ball out of the park with, with the park with the, you know this this performance. Um, he's just really a wonderful, not only cellist but an artist, you know. And um, I'm I love the cello. It's I, I wouldn't say it's my favorite string instrument. As that's like as I say, that's like saying uh, I, I I like my child Charlie better than the other way. <laughs> Um, but I, I really, one of the things about it is that I've, I've noticed that a lot of recent pieces have been um, kind of loud and, and uh, scrubby and all of this kind of stuff. Um, I think of the cellist as uh, a singer. Um, the, the cello has the, the whole range of the human voice, from the lowest male voice to the highest female voice. And it, it is comfortable in all of these registers. I mean, it's just, you can just sort of take it from the bottom up to the very, very top. It's just a fabulous instrument. And it is by nature, um, I think by its nature, it, it is a singer. Um, uh, 
as I sometimes say, um, string players, the strings <laughs> are singers on steroids. I mean, they can do all kinds of other things. And uh, But it was my great pleasure to spend this time with the cello and knowing that Zool will be playing it. This was um, commissioned by the South Florida Symphony Orchestra and was, was played, um, premiered in last March, um, right just yeah. in time. <laughs> And uh, oh, it, it, to me, it's a wonderful piece. Uh, people have noticed that there's there's a kind of a jazz element in it, um, and I didn't say I'm going to put a jazz thing in it. But I I actually played jazz um, when I was in college, particularly. Um, I played bebop trumpet and big band and all that kind of. And I love jazz, and um, I it, sometimes it just comes out, and I you know whether I plan to do that or not and apparently it's it struck a lot of people as having sort of a strong jazz influence uh, the the vocal thing and then the kind of active jazz you know character <laughs> yeah oh that's wonderful oh super looking forward to that it's going to be just so wonderful to work on that and uh get to get to have zool with us again so, uh, and then of course, you know, that program overall, you know, just, you know, so much great American music on that, of course. Oh, that's very a fabulous famous. program. Yeah. Fabulous program. <laughs> the, the famous, you know, Barbara Adagio for strings, oh. uh, Ives Unanswered Question that's going to have um, our players scattered around the hall in a really unique fashion. Um, and then, you know, we're going to throw a huge feature on our amazing woodwind section. They have just been playing lights out this whole season long. And the yeah, Brahms yeah. Serenade is essentially a symphony for for wind instruments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it's a wonderful program. I <laughs> I wish I could be there to hear it live, but I will <laughs> certainly want to hear it uh, virtually. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's move on uh, to, to April now, and you know this this was a really interesting program to put together, um, and and I think. You know, just again, you know, it's it's been so much fun in, in many ways to to put together programs without necessarily a need to um, I I don't know without a need to have them always feel like so heavy. And I think with yeah, this yeah. case, you know, this is such a delightful program, and I almost think of it as sort of the romantics. Not only because your piece is called romance, but you know, we've got the Tchaikovsky Serenade for strings and the Marquez yeah, yeah. and so on. You know, there's there's something lush about all of the pieces on on this program. Uh, but maybe you could tell us a bit about the the romance. Well, it was commissioned by the McKim Fund and the Library of Congress. Um, I wrote it in 1993. Um, and first for um, violin and piano, and Ida Kavafian and Menahem Pressler did the um, the premiere uh, at the Library of Congress, and we all thought, you know, this would also work very well for uh, the small orchestra. So I said, yes, let's do it. Okay, so I, I did it, and um, I it, it's a kind of a light light piece but it's um uh, i mean i think music encompasses so much of what we are as humans uh and i always say it's it's not just the brain of the composer it's it's the heart the soul the gut the whole nine yards of the humanity and and this is there's there's an uh kind of a sweet element to this to this piece and you know that comes out from time to time <laughs> Yeah, absolutely wonderful and, and excited we get to feature our concertmaster, uh, Joel Edelberg, with us on, the, on mm -hmm. this program. And then, uh, and then we're finishing things out in, in May with a program that uh, in, in most ways really celebrates this orchestra and this community and what everyone has accomplished this <laughs> entire season by coming together under such challenging circumstances. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna go back and take a look at a piece um, by Paul Dooley called Sonoma Strong, which was written for us um, after the Tubbs fire to commemorate, oh, uh, yeah. you know, to commemorate the, the resiliency of this community. And he's going to arrange it in a in a setting where we can once again uh, perform it with uh, you know all of our safety measures in place. Um, and then you know with, with Haydn's Farewell Symphony, I mean, I couldn't think of a of a better piece to. Um, in perhaps in a, in a bittersweet but but wonderful way, yeah, um, yeah. say farewell to everything we've gone through this uh, yeah, this year, yeah. the piece where everyone gets to slowly walk off stage, and you know all season long, 
um, we've gotten to hear no applause. And of course, yeah. that can always be a little strange. So why not finish with a symphony that actually doesn't need applause at the end because there's nobody left no, on nobody stage? There. <laughs> They're all uh, back in Vienna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, let's, but, uh, but, you know, your, your word peanuts gallery is just, I, I, like, I'm just always smiling so much when I hear this piece. It is so much fun and yeah. uh, has, of course, a wonderful connection to our own community. So maybe you could take us uh, around the incredible story of how this piece came about. Well, this was commissioned by Carnegie Hall, um, and it was first performed in 1996 by the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra. Um, and it was in the course of, you know, this piece that uh, Charles and Jeannie Schultz and I uh, got very, very well connected, shall we say. We just really enjoyed each other's company very, very much. Uh, and my late partner also, you know. Um, so, um, this was a special occasion, and I had never done anything like this. And when I had the composer's chair at Carnegie Hall, and um, we thought that it would make sense and be a wonderful thing if, if the first piece, I was going to have three different commissions over three years, if my first piece was for a family concert. Well, I, I, uh, I had never written anything like that. And I really feel, I mean, I would never, ever write down to a child. Um, I might write something a little shorter or something like that, but I, I always would write something I want to hear. And, you know, not denying the child the, all of the aspects of the humanity that we all have. Okay. So I, I decided to um, go kind of character by character. And of course, I, I felt I had to start with Schroeder because, I mean, uh, he's the reason I needed a piano in the in the orchestra. Um, and of course, I think most of my friends, probably you too, you know, people have, would have a certain Peanuts cartoon on their refrigerator, and it, it's always such a, a pleasure and a, a delight to see. Schroeder sitting at his toy piano and playing the Hammerkugel Sonata by Beethoven, which is one of the most difficult masterpieces for a pianist to play. I mean, there's just something absolutely luscious about that. So um, <clears throat> since that was in his repertoire, I did a little variation on the, on the Beethoven Hammerklavier. And then Linus um, always had his blanket, and I figured he was already always ready for a little nap. And and so uh, lullaby for Linus. And then um, Snoopy um, does the samba. I spent quite some time before writing this thinking, what kind of a dance would Snoopy want to do? And I thought of this and I thought of that and I finally said, samba, it's, it's hot, it's cool. It's just, it's just Snoopy-ish. So I, did uh, Snoopy does the samba, <laughs> and um, then Lucy freaks out, um, at which it starts very calmly, and then of course she has this tantrum, and um, that was that movement, and um, and then of course Peppermint Patty and Marcy had to have a role. I mean, since they were the ones that that brought me to the attention of the world. <laughs> So they lead the parade and, and all of the characters come back and there's little motives from each character in that. But uh, I, I hope people enjoy it, whether you're young or old. I mean, it's, it's, a, it, it's a, I, I want it to be a pleasure, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's, you know, it's not only a piece for anyone of all ages, but there's so many inside jokes for musicians that I think oh, yeah. <laughs> also, whether you're an audience member or a musician, you're totally enjoying every second of this. I know, I know. Yeah, I, I, I'm into inside jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I am even more pumped up for this series of concerts now than when I was. Oh, than I was when I even created them. Um, Ellen, what a pleasure it is to talk with you, and can't wait to take this journey with you, with our audience, with my colleagues on stage. What an incredible treat we're all in for! So, thank you so much for taking this time to chat with me. And thank you for being so, you know, generous to, to my music. You you use the word um, voyage. Uh, <laughs> And that's what I think of music. Everything we do is a voyage, whether it's writing or listening. 
um, anyway. So <laughs> it'll be my great pleasure. All right. Well, we'll see you uh, many times uh, virtually, Ellen, and, and okay. can't wait for our first time. Bye-bye. <laughs>